Welcome. Thank you for joining me in the video today because we're going to be talking about my updates on this incredible instrument. So without further ado, let's get started. So in my last update video, I showed you that I installed three Finnish keys on the instrument. And by Finnish keys, I mean that the both the touch piece and the pad cup were present and were in the final form that they would be on the final instrument. Well, I'm happy to say that I actually doubled the amount of keys from three to six. So the first keys that I installed on this instrument were the uh, the right hand first finger, right hand second finger, and then the B flat F uh, sliver key. So in addition to those keys, now I also have the right hand third finger, the, um, the F C key, and the low A flat uh, clarion uh, E flat or D sharp key. That's right there and control is a pad cup, it's kind of to see right there. So. Now I have those three keys on the instrument. Now, I will say that while the first three keys that I installed the instrument went on fairly easy without any problems, these keys proved to be much more of a challenge, which is why I unfortunately didn't get to post a update video last week. I had kind of finished the keys, but they weren't to my liking, so I had to modify the instrument a bit, and actually I had to shorten one of the joints by about an inch just to get the notes that I uh, made to play in tune. So let me show you some of the uh, more intricate features of these keys. So the first one I'm going to start with is the, the uh, right hand third finger key. So the touch piece is right here and um, normally with these uh, with these cure keys I made the uh, the reach from the touch piece to the pad cup isn't that far so the keys are relatively short and simple. Well for, for this key the pad cup had to be on the bottom bow of the instrument which is an insane amount if you think about it. It's almost two feet of key work. So in order to do this, I had to come up with a pretty uh, clever solution, in my opinion. So what you would normally do is you would use a very long rod that would extend from there all the way to the end of the instrument, down here. And this works, but it creates several problems. So on some instruments with long rods, like contra alto or contra bass clarinets, what you tend to find is um, in order to avoid the keys binding when it gets really um, cold out because what will happen is the plastic of the instrument will, ex will contract faster than the metal. You have to have a lot of slop in the key work and on a really long rod you need a lot of slop. So if I were to make the rod that long it would create problems where it would just feel loose and it wouldn't really be good. So what I did was I divided the key work into two separate sections. So you've got this section with the touch piece on it, then you have this kind of intricate lever design which has a Teflon slider for a nice smooth action and that's finally connected to the second piece of the rod or the second rod that connects to the pad cup which closes the uh, tone hole making the note play. So um, pretty simple relatively speaking. Um, the next two keys are a little bit more complicated. You see the, uh, the, the D sharp, the G sharp key has to be on this other joint, even though the touch piece is on this joint. Same thing with the FC key. So what I had to do was essentially, I made the keys on uh, this other joint, and then I put the touch pieces here, and then I made this little linkage device. Essentially, what it does is it's like a chain link. So this is kind of similar to a mechanism found on uh, Wolf bassoons, where it's like a connecting rod. Actually, you can kind of think of it like a connecting rod inside of an engine, where it connects the piston to the crankshaft. Only instead of a piston and a crankshaft, you got two levers on two keys. Now with mine, it's a little bit different. Kind of the same function, but a little different. They're basically like little chain linkages that connect one lever to the other. And I have these on both the keys. And essentially, this means that I can have the touch pieces where they're convenient and easy to reach, and the pad cups can be on another joint. So um, a little complicated and a little unusual mechanism, but it serves the purpose of closing the pad cups perfectly because the keys are nice and responsive, they're nice and snappy. So I'm very happy with how that came out. So um, let me just play, not really a chromatic scale, but a scale of every note that I can currently play on this instrument, not including the ones in the upper register. <laughs> You can see the instrument is starting to really come together and I'm uh, very happy with how the progress is coming out so far. So the next thing I want to talk about is the pads of the instrument. Now before 
in my last update video, I was just using simple, um, well, actually I have a setup over here, it's what's known as neoprene. And essentially what neoprene is, it's this rubbery foam-like material with closed cells that's uh, waterproof and mostly airtight. So it works fairly well for pads. However, what I was actually finding was that the, uh, the foam was dampening the sound and I wasn't getting the projection that I really want. So what I did was, I thought what I did, I did the same thing that I do on my bass clarinet, where I have uh, sheepskin pads with metal resonators like you find in saxophones. Only with this instrument, I kind of like the look of the black pads, so I was actually able to find black sheepskin pads with uh, metal resonators. Actually, those pads were, every single pad for this instrument only cost $10. What I did was I bought them from China from a company called Zhengho Music. And um, the quality isn't perfect, but I will say that at least 80 to 90% of the pads that I received were more than good enough to use, even on a professional level instrument. So I was very happy that I was both able to save money and get the exact pads that I want for this instrument. And a lot of people think that pads don't make a huge difference. What I found is that the projection was greatly improved on the, on the low notes on this instrument. So before where I couldn't really play much louder than a mezzo forte, I can now play a decently loud forte. So that's great because I really want this instrument to project because it has a really interesting and unique sound and I think that needs to be heard. So that's pretty much all my updates on the video. Or, uh, I'm sorry, my updates on this instrument. Um, let's see, I also installed a floor peg. Uh, I kind of had it installed previously, but I, it wasn't really working too well. I got a new, um, I got a new uh, nut here, and I got a uh, rubber stopper for the end so it wouldn't scratch my floor. So now that works pretty well. So I think I'm on track to finish the lower joint by Christmas, like I previously said in my, uh, my deadline that I made for myself. So I'm very happy with how much progress I've made. I think the instrument is coming along great. Uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think it's looking good? Do you, are you excited to see more about this project? Please let me know what you think in the comments and let me know if you have any questions also because I'll be happy to answer them. So, all right everyone, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're not already, please consider subscribing or following me on Instagram at when instrument repairs where I post sort of sneak peeks and spoilers for my projects. Uh, thanks everyone. Have a wonderful day.